And every time we talk about why we do office hours, of course, it's to be able to share information across the region, but we want to make sure that we're also access, giving students access to the level that they need it. Um, assistive technology and its use is one of the high leverage practices indicated by the CEC, Council for Exceptional Children, about one of those things. They have a list of 22 things that will give you the most bang for your buck um, when you're trying to work with students. And these are the types of things that will um, allow for them to make the most progress. And one of those is using assistive and instructional technologies. When we think about AT, we think through the SET framework. We had a session on that a few weeks ago. We think through the student, the environment, the tasks, and then think about the tools that they might use. Um, make sure that as they go through these excellent, amazing tools that they're going to share today, um, make sure that you're thinking through the SET framework. Do you have students in certain environments doing certain tasks that could benefit from these tools? We always use a lens of equity to make sure that every student is getting exactly what it is that they need. So I'm going to turn it over to today's guests. We've got Tina Olson, Haley Bryant, and Shannon Pruel here from the Northern Lights Special Education Co-op. And I will turn it over to you now and I'll stop screen sharing. Thank you, Julie. So I am going to share our presentation. Give me a quick minute. Oh, and I'm on the wrong slide even already, so let me go back. All right, here we are. So I am Shannon Pruel. I'm the technology coordinator at the Northern Lights Special Education Cooperative. And I have two other members of our AT team here. So I have Tina Olson. Tina, wave there, thanks. Tina is our uh, teacher of students with physical and health disabilities. And we have Haley Bryant, our OT and then myself there. And so we're just three members on our AT team um, showing you today our process um, um, that we developed for getting low tech kits. And I'll just quickly, I know we do have some members from our cooperative here, but um, for those that are not aware, um, the Northern Light Special Education Cooperative is 13 districts outside of Duluth. So we go up to Lake Superior School District, all the way down to Willow River and over to McGregor. So we have 13 smaller school districts. All right, so I'm gonna turn it over to Tina and Haley just to talk a little bit about the background and how we came about to develop these kits. So we're gonna do some swapping of chairs. All right, hello everyone. Um, I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about our process and why we developed a lot of kits. Um, we surveyed a district and then we surveyed three different teachers in that district and we looked at um, an elementary teacher, a middle school and a high school teacher. And we just gave them a survey and then they filled out the survey and then we went back and we kind of asked them some more guiding questions from what we um, found on the survey. And then we had them, um, and then we compiled it together. And some of the questions, um, what is your current AT process? How often have you checked out items from the, um, Northern Lights Special Ed um, Co-op Library or the uh, Northern Lights or the Nor Northland Lending Library. And then um, what could make it easier or more convenient for you to use AT? So those were, there was a few more questions, but those were three questions that jumped out at us. And a lot of them had not checked out AT devices a very um, small percentage, maybe once. And usually if they've tried them, uh, an NLSEC staff has checked them out and brought them to them. So that was really an interesting um, findings in that point. And then they just said really like every teacher, they need more time. And then if they had the supplies on hand and ready to go to use, kind of like a grab bag or a box that they could just pull out. Um, some of those more low tech items than always looking at the high tech. So that's kind of where we came up with the Lottie kit. Anything else? Okay. And then we're going to just share our bins. Here, let me switch spots again. It's like musical chairs over here. Um, thanks, Tina. So yeah, the, after that survey, um, they just found that there was a need to have some more of those low tech items. So that's why we developed them. And I know Tina calls it the Lottie kit. And I don't know if anybody's been around for years, but 
like 20 years ago, these low tech kits were actually sold as Lottie kits, but now we are just calling them low tech kits um, because Lottie is copyrighted. Um, so they're interchangeable, those two words. Um, and then actually what happened in the 2020, 2021 school year, um, they did this survey with the district, um, decided we needed these low tech kits. I brought it to our supervisor when, and was able to develop three kits. Um, and actually our OTs took the lead on this and they did an excellent job. So these are kind of what the bins look like. And we developed the three based on one in each building. We did one in just one district we focused. We did the elementary, the middle and the high school. Um, and that went pretty well. They checked them out last school year. Um, I think two of the districts are still currently using them. And then I brought all this information back to our supervisor and I asked, could we make three more? And she said, yes. So I've spent the last couple months getting these bins developed. Um, and voila, we have three more now to check out in our cooperative. Um, and I put in the, right in the bottom there, if you can still see it, they were um, approximately about $125 per kit. Um, I just ordered enough for three. And so I know some people are always interested in that, how much did it cost? And it costed about $375 to make the, all three of those kits. So the next slide is um, it's kind of small, but we'll go through these items. But you can see I took a picture of everything in this one particular kit. This is the elementary kit. And if you click on that tiny URL, I think we've got time. I'm going to click on it. And I'll make my screen a little bigger here. So the OTs developed this. They did such a nice job. They have this handout. Um, and it has a description, a picture of every item, the link where you can buy it, and also a description of how you can use it with the students. So this is really nice um, that this documents in the kits. Um, thanks, Julie Ray. And people can see everything in there because we also know things are going to get used or misplaced. So this is nice to have this as a reference. So, and you'll see it goes on and on. So we have it divided out elementary at the top and then um, the middle school and then the high schools after that. So I'm gonna go back here. All right, so next we are gonna show you the kit, some of the items in the kit. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and we're gonna go back. And so now you can see all of us probably depending on your layout. And I just wanna, um, since we're gonna show you some of the items live, if anybody's ever used that pinning feature in Google Meet before, this is really nice. So if you click right now, hover over my picture, you should see an option to, with a pin. If you click on that pin, that'll make our screen bigger. And now it should be easier for you to see some of the items that the um, Haley and Tina are gonna show you. And we just picked out a few items just to show you um, how how what's in the kit and just to describe. One thing is just a, a slant board, which is nice just to have in there for students for when they're writing or this one has clips to keep their paper on it, even with students with physical needs. And you can always use a binder too, uh, you know, a one inch binder or a half inch binder will work to be a slant board also. Another thing that I just knew, learned about recently is these erasable pens um, that are great for students if they like different colors and then they can erase too and they always don't have to have a pencil. They also make erasable highlighters too that we just found out about, which are very cool. So we're thinking about possibly adding that at some point. And then another thing is um, a weighted pencil we have in there and some of them have other choices or a variety of the weighted pencils in there too. And then um, a sand timer or any other timer you could throw in there. I mean, even sticky notes. Um, and then we also have these easy reading rulers, which are like overlays to with different colors that you can put on their um, readings or their assignments. They'll help um, push out those letters and make it bolder. And each, each student likes different colors and makes it easier for them to see. And then just a variety of fidgets. And you can, now the big thing is those little pop fidgets that you can pop. They're a little bit noisier, um, but just even a straw-like. Um, different foam 
fidgets. This is just a little ball or a football shaped um, fidget, anything you can think of. And even just throwing sticky notes in there, maybe something too that you would use for a student. Or um, even like these that highlight, even if you cut out a paper piece of paper or a note card and you cut out a window so it could help follow them while they're reading. Just anything that you have that you like for tools too that you could throw into that um, box and have it at hand. And as you're working with a student, you're like, oh, this might work today. So you can just pull it out. So those are a few things that I had. Um, I'll just add to go with the fidgets. I mean, it's an ever, you know, changing process. And so like Velcro, a strip of Velcro, the Lego tape, those are also just quiet ideas too that um, can be easily put in this kit. But a few things I'll just share is the pencil and grip sampler. This has different pencils in here. Um, and for a lot of students that aren't fans of handwriting, um, I found that this pencil, um, it's a thicker lead, lead inside. So it's gives, gives different feedback when you write. It's a smoother feeling. And I have one special education class where all the students love these pencils. Um, so this has been a big one. So they tried it out and then the teacher went and ordered more pencils. Um, there's also different um, pencil grips in the kit. Um, and it explains like which grip you might want to try first, um, depending on what their challenges are. Um, but before that too, even the grips are just, we put in short pencils just to facilitate um, a functional grasp. So short pencils are in there. Um, and then we put in some adaptive paper, some different samples. So we have like the gray space paper. I don't know if you can see that. Um, and then we also did raised line paper too. So there's different sizing for that and different styles that the teachers can um, try out and it's easy for them to um, access. And in the front of the folder on that one, it does say the stages of writing mm -hmm. and just kind of a little guideline, which is kind of nice to have two of how to use that raised paper. I will say like stage one on the bottom. So it gives you some nice information. Um, is there anything else that we wanted? Oh, there's also some different scissors too. Um, so we have the loop scissors that are in there and then just the spring loaded scissors too. So a couple different options um, to try out for adapted scissors. Any questions or any other tools that um, any of you guys use in your classrooms that you really like that we didn't show? Krista just typed in the chat window and maybe Krista, you would share with us too. She mentioned friction pens and highlighters are awesome. Yeah. The, the brand is, is friction with an, e with an X and they, I have one right here. I use them. <laughs> they, I use them for in the rocket book. That's like um, er an erasable um, notebook, but um, it's also just great on regular paper. And I just got the highlighters and they're super cool, but yeah, all different colors and different widths of, um, writing i don't know what the, the ballpoint piece or whatever so they're mm. but they work really well they're super um like not a lot of, of erasable things work really well and these totally erase so I, they're pretty nice great good and anyone if you want to type something in the chat window things that you use or things that you have a question about feel free to do that um, Anna Richards just typed in the window, printing visuals of grasp on little laminated sheets. Great idea. Did you want to talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, I can just say what we've been doing recently since a lot of students are coming in from DL with really no knowledge of how to grasp. We've just been providing teachers with a little animated picture of right-handed grasp, left-handed grasp, and then they can put them on the students' desks keep them laminated so they can be reused. So that's just a little visual reminder to the kids. Great, another great OT tip, thank you. Great, I'm gonna go back to our presentation here. Give me a second.
All right, so those um, were some sample items that we have in there, and I imagine we'll add, add more as we go on. Um, and then I'm just going to wrap it up, and we can have any other questions here. Um, we do have some of our assistive technology consideration documents high, um, laminated and with this little ring on there so they don't get lost. Um, we uh, All these documents that I have on the slide, we've put on here, so they have those in the low-tech kit as reference. So since we have a few minutes, maybe I'll take just a couple minutes to go through some of these. So this first document on our left is what we call our start here, our main document. So if I open that up, we can take a peek at it. Shannon, are you, you're not, I don't see any screen sharing. How does it look for you, Julie Ray? No? I'm seeing it on my end. Krista, okay. do you still have her pinned? Oh, that's why. Right, thank you. No, you. that's good. We all thank pinned you. you. Yep, I'm right. pinned me, there, there we go. Yep, so it says at the top, um, NLSCC AT consideration and trial process. So we um, really hand this out to all our new staff and encourage people to start here. Um, and this has links to everything else. All these laminated documents are all off this main one here. So our first one says AT should be considered every year. And then we, in SPED forms, we made three specific drop downs that our staff can use to help get them starting and considering AT that they can put into the AT section and SPED forms. Um, so it just sort of walks them through the process here. So if you, more data is needed, needed, they need to do a trial, well, where can they get some of these devices? So we list links on where to get those. We have a small lending library. Um, the Region 3 has a pretty good lending library at Northland. And then we also go through the Lighthouse Center for Vital Living. And I know I put a link here, but I'm not 100% sure it works. Sherry, I think, told us last week that um, inventory isn't available online. But frequently, myself or Tina, if there's something we don't have. Um, we just contact a person over there and she's wonderful and she gets us the device to trial. So um, there's lots of places you can get um, AT devices. And then um, the next one is this AT consideration guide going through the set process. Um, and it's in Google. So it's nice when you open that up, you can just make a copy and type in type in it yourself. And I think um, Julie Ray, that might be a document we, we cloned from you. So Duluth has a lot of good documents that we um, use and just change slightly. And then we have a data collection form um, for collecting data. And this document is just really nice to walk through the whole process. So that's that first one. And then we also have a link for example AT tools. So what happened was when we had our low tech kits, it really forced us to go through and look at some of these documents and made sure they were updated. So we went through and made this document, color coded it. I don't know if you can quite see that's a little bit easier to read um, on just example things. If you're looking for communication, what are some example AT devices you could use in that area? Again, thank you Duluth. And then I talked a little bit about our set set document there. So um, those are the documents that we have in our low tech kits. Um, Tina Haley, do you guys have anything you want to add? I just want to add, even for like the AT, I just um, got a shower chair from uh, a person at the lighthouse. So I she has a variety of things, even for you know daily living. So just be open to those areas too. And we're talking a little bit more you know, high tech items, but even a shower chair is pretty low tech to trial it out. So, and, you know, anything you can think of, just ask anyone and they might have it tomorrow. Hey, Lisa. I was just going to add that even when we made these AT kits um, and brought them into some of the resource rooms, still like we noticed that they weren't being utilized a ton yet. Um, and so one of the things we tried was having one of the um, certified OT assistants go in at the same time with the kit and brought out some items um, and just use them with different students um, when it was appropriate and just show that um, demonstration um, in person, which really seemed to help. And then um, they seemed to be opening up the boxes more often and, you know, they have this stuff right there and like, okay, where was that again? And so that really helped um, push more of the implementation of some of the items into the classrooms too. Hey, thanks, Haley. So that was all we had. Um, were there other questions? I have a quick question. Um, so 
one, I would love to see your full survey that you sent out to the group before you um, did that. So I would love it if you give me a side share on that piece. Um, but also I was wondering, are you planning on repeating that survey then, you know, after they've had the kits in their possession for a while, those, those pilot rooms? <laughs> I think we thought about it and it was hard because when we started it, it was during like December of COVID. So it was everyone going to distance learning. So we did a lot of Google meets with the teachers and they were very flexible and very helpful. So, and then this year, I'm not sure how they've been used if they have been. So it'd be nice to maybe do a survey and ask not the same survey, but um, ask them how they like using the kits, I think is what we were thinking of doing and what they felt was beneficial. And one thing is we did ask, we did have a DCD severe teacher you, do the survey and use the kit, but it wasn't as helpful for him because his students were more working on those transition and work skills. So really, it really is more focused for a DCDM or SLD or EBD classroom is what I see with the low tech. That makes a ton of sense. Beautiful, thank you. Anyone else have any questions? You can type them in the chat window and I can read them aloud if you'd like, or you can unmute yourselves and and speak if that's an easier option. What's the process for checking these out? Good question. Um, I We have them in our Northern Lights AT Lending Library. Uh, I think on that main startup here document, there's a link to that and it goes to a Google Sheet. And so anybody and um, actually anybody anywhere can see it, but we encourage our um, 13 districts just to look in there to see if it's checked out. And then they, most of the time, since people know me, they just um, shoot me an email. Um, I think in one of those documents, it says you can contact any of the Northern Lights AT people and we have a list. Um, so right now I think we haven't checked them out yet because I just finished them like last week, but usually about six weeks is what we're thinking for a checkout process. Um, yeah, we definitely need a better, probably a better, better process to market those. We're not not quite there yet, but it's a good thinking question. I think this is great marketing right here, Shannon, because I, yep. <laughs> I feel like just seeing them has been like, oh, you know, Krista typed in the chat window and I agreed also, like we can see making these and keeping them in our resource rooms or having them in our library too. Duluth has its own library to um, to be able to check them out. I think this is great advertising this way because it looks like a really, it's such a good idea. It's such a good idea. Right. All right, any other questions or comments? Well, thanks for having us. And Thank you so much for presenting today. Um, I'm going to stop the recording, but this has been such good information for us to have, and I, I really appreciate it. Um, I think it just gives us more good ideas of next direction.